the Apollo 4 mission marked the first operational use of Launch Complex 39, as well as the first launch of the Apollo Saturn V vehicle, which will someday carry three Americans to the moon. The major components of the Saturn V were manufactured and tested in several areas of the United States under the direction of the Marshall Space Flight Center and were shipped to the Kennedy Space Center for assembly and launch. The three vehicle stages underwent extensive checkout inside the vehicle assembly building prior to being erected on a mobile launcher in high bay number one. Apollo 4 was the first flight version Saturn V to be erected in the building. Prior to assembly, the Apollo spacecraft provided by the Manned Spacecraft Center underwent extensive automated checkout and tests in Kennedy's Manned Spacecraft Operations Building. Then it was transported to the assembly building and mated with the launch vehicle. The Apollo spacecraft for this test consisted of operational command and service modules and a boilerplate lunar module. The Apollo Saturn V was subjected to electronic and mechanical checkouts in the high bay. The tests were monitored and controlled in the launch control center adjacent to the vehicle assembly building. The computerized equipment in firing room one of the control center was used to check out and launch Apollo 4. Government and contractor technicians operated the 218 individual consoles and 238 racks of equipment. At the completion of the VAB checkout, the launch escape system was installed on top of the Apollo spacecraft to complete the configuration. In the early hours of August 26th, the Apollo Saturn V began its journey to the launch site some three miles away. The vehicle on its mobile launcher was slowly moved to the pad by the 3,000 ton transporter. The Apollo 4 mission included several significant milestones in the program to land men on the moon and return them safely to Earth. The mission would require the first use of the launch facilities. The first flight of an integrated all systems up Apollo Saturn space vehicle. The first flight of the booster and the second stage of the Saturn V. The first restart in space of the third stage and the first demonstration of Apollo spacecraft performance entering the Earth's atmosphere at speeds greater than those previously encountered by spacecraft returning from orbital tests. After a five degree climb to the top of the pad, the transporter moved the mobile launcher and the huge rocket into place on the launch site. The mobile service structure was then moved onto the pad. Five circular platforms on this structure provide access to the spacecraft for final checkout and servicing. A number of significant pre-launch tests were conducted from the Launch Control Center. The countdown demonstration test, a complete dress rehearsal of the 83-hour flight countdown, including fueling all stages of the launch vehicle and spacecraft, began in late September. Several problems were uncovered and corrected during the demonstration count, which required almost two weeks to complete. A flight readiness test next included a tie-in with the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston from where the Apollo 4 flight was controlled. When pad testing was completed, a launch date for Apollo 4 was set for November 7th. A six-hour launch window opened at approximately 7 a.m. for an extended number of days. However, minor operational problems delayed the start of the terminal countdown until November 7th. Once begun, the countdown progressed smoothly. And on the afternoon of November 8th, the transporter moved the mobile service structure from the pad to its parking area. The service arms, which carry fuel, power, and communications lines to the Apollo Saturn, remained attached to the vehicle until liftoff. The flight plan called for Saturn V to hurl the Apollo spacecraft and the launch vehicle's instrument unit and third stage into a 117-mile circular orbit. The third stage, after completing two orbits, was to ignite a second time to place Apollo into an elliptical orbit with an apogee of 11,400 miles. The second stage was scheduled to burn for six and one-tenth minutes, 
to produce one million pounds of thrust. The 138-foot-high first stage would provide an initial thrust of seven and one-half million pounds to lift the six million two hundred and twenty thousand pound vehicle off the pad to an altitude of approximately 38 miles. Behind the louvered windows of the launch control center, the Kennedy Space Center launch team manned the consoles, recorders, and equipment. The ever-changing display of information confirmed that the countdown was proceeding as planned. As night approached, propellant loading began. Over one million gallons of propellant, including 450,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and 300,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen, were pumped into the three stages of the Saturn V. Throughout the night, the countdown continued without any major holds. On November 9, 1967, traffic streamed into the Space Center as the world press, radio and TV, government and industry officials, and Space Center personnel gathered to witness the historic launch. As the countdown approached zero, precisely on schedule at 7 a.m., it demonstrated the superb cooperation and effective teamwork of the government industry organization which made this moment possible. mighty 363-foot-tall rocket climbed skyward atop an enormous pillar of flame. The five huge engines of the first stage burned flawlessly, generating seven and one-half million pounds of thrust to initiate a mission that was also to be flawless and best described as a textbook flight. and one quarter minutes into the flight, the inside engine of the first stage shut down. Fifteen seconds later, at an altitude of 39 miles, the four outside engines shut down. Cameras on board the launch vehicle recorded first stage separation, which occurred at T plus two and one half minutes. The separation was clearly visible to the thousands who watched the huge rocket climb into space. Shortly after second stage ignition, the spacecraft's launch escape system was jettisoned. After a second stage burn of six and one-tenth minutes, the third stage ignited to hurl 190 tons, the heaviest payload ever launched by the United States 
into a 118 mile high parking orbit. The payload was heavier than the combined weight of all previous U.S. spacecraft placed into orbit. After coasting for two orbits, the third stage reignited to send Apollo into preliminary elliptical orbit. After separating from the third stage, the spacecraft's propulsion system was fired to raise the apogee to 11,232 miles. Eight hours and 36 minutes after liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center, the Apollo spacecraft landed in the Pacific Ocean within sight of its recovery ship, the aircraft carrier Bennington. Accelerated by a second burn of the service module engine, the spacecraft successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at more than 25,000 miles per hour to test the Apollo heat shield at temperatures over 5,000 degrees. With all test objectives met, Apollo 4 the first flight of America's lunar rocket was an unqualified success. The mission was an event unequaled in the history of the nation's space program.